Hello guys, it's Martin here, UK guy in USA on the ISM International Scale Modelers Forum and Full Moon Drummer here on YouTube. Um, coming to you with my second build update for my Airfix 148 Junkers JU87B. Um, so I'll give you a quick report where I'm at. Um, since the last video I posted on Tuesday, um, there was two days, Wednesday and Thursday, I didn't get anything done. Other things tied me up, uh, so I got a few hours in yesterday, Friday, and um, today it's now 12.55pm, Saturday afternoon. We have our four-year-old, four-month-old grandson come in at 1.30. We're taking care of him for the weekend while his parents are out at a wedding so I won't get anything done this weekend probably tomorrow evening Sunday evening I might be able to get something done but uh, before he arrives I just wanted to get a quick update and let you see where I'm at anyway when I last left you guys I'd painted the cockpit uh, interior the cockpit tub I'd assembled the wings the stabilizer halves and the propeller and painted the wheels and inside the wheel fairings. So since then I've assembled the cockpit into the fuselage off, assembled the fuselage offs together. I put the upper engine cowling in place and when you assemble the fuselage offs together you have to put the propeller in place and the rear wheel. So they're in place, they're painted as well before I put them in place. Uh, the stabs are on with the support struts um, and the main wings are on. So I have a aircraft, what looks like an aircraft, the wheels are on as well, the front wheels. Um, so I'll show you that and I'll talk about some of the issues which um, I came across during that process. So there we are. Wings on, fuselage together, the stabs on. Um, the struts for the stabs, rear wheel, and then the front wheels are in place. I airbrushed them. I airbrushed the Schwarz green, and then there's a band at the top, which is in the dark green, the Dunkel green, uh, and they mount onto the two struts that come down, sort of pads that come down off the bottom of the wings. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just mask those while I spray the underside of the plain blue. But anyway, let's talk about the issues we had. Things I don't like. One, I don't like having to assemble the propeller prior to painting the um, aircraft. I don't like that. You could put the spindle in place, I guess, um, but it'd have to be glued in place and then you assemble the propeller onto the spindle, well, that would have to be glued and it wouldn't rotate. Or you could do something clever, you could put a like a cup shape bushing on the back that presses onto the back of the spindle to stop it falling out and you glue the bush shape and the bushing in, the cup shape bushing in to trap it. But you'd have to make that up and I don't have anything that enabled me to manufacture something like that to do that. Um, so I don't like that. Second thing is I don't like the wheel. I'm going to put that in place because now that makes it vulnerable when I'm sanding down and doing other things to this aircraft there's a chance that that could get broken um, the third thing was when I assembled the upper cowling um, the sides of the fuselage halves were bowed inwards so when you put the upper cowling on, in place it was overhanging each side so what I did was I cut a cocktail stick to length and pushed it down inside the walls of the two fuselage halves and that stressed them out and uh, then I glued them in place when I got the position I was happy with then I um, put the cowling in place the cowling didn't fit well I had to sand some of the edges to get it to fit because I wanted to bring the, two, the front side of it flush with the front side of the fuselage so the propeller's not hindered in any way by a step uh, so I had to uh, just sand some off the back of the cowling to push it backwards. There was a gap around this back edge and it's not a very good fit so I've had to fill that. 
and as you can see I've had to fill all the wing roots what I did when I assembled the wings I held them in place with tape to push the join against the fuselage on the upper side um, and it left a big gap on the bottom I just didn't want to equalize that and have big gaps top and bottom I wanted to keep sanding at a minimum on the top and then all the joints everywhere I've got I've had to put filler on every joint they were really bad all over look so the full length of the aircraft I've got filler at all the joints and even around these wheels one thing when I assembled these wheels um, I'm just going to show you the assembly immediately yeah, so when you drop the wheels on there's these raised pads on the bottoms of the wings now when I put the wheels on here those pads were angled so when you put the wheel on dry fit it it made the wheels angle outwards like that and I know that's not right so I checked I went online I went to wingspallet.com and pulled up a um, view of the plane itself I don't know if you can see that from it But here on the wings pallet, it shows that the uh, from a front view that the wheels drop vertically 90 degrees to the horizontal. Well, that wouldn't have happened, and if you weren't, were not aware that they have to drop down 90 degrees vertical to the horizontal, then um, you'd have some issues. So what I had to do was sand the pads back so they were parallel to the floor both of them and then on the ends of the wheels fairings uh, they're splitting off and you assemble them together there's draft angle that's been put in to allow those parts to be ejected from the mold well those draft angles are about five degrees so with those draft angles you're only getting single point contact where the two halves meet which means there's gaps all around so I sanded those edges to try and get them as straight as possible and uh, kept dry fitting to get the smallest gap I could and also having them dropping down at 90 degrees from the horizontal so there's a lot of work in this kit a lot of filling I've got a lot of sanding to do and um, I had a lot of fitting I had to do you know making parts fit so I'm not happy with the kit I've been spoilt with Tamiya now. The last two kits I did were Tamiya and Azigawa and there was no filler. Those kits went together gorgeous without the need for all this problem. So I'd let me just sketch out what I was doing. So if if that's your wing, exaggerate it. Um, the pads coming off the bottom of the wing were angled like that. And then the wheels exaggerated the top of the assembly of the wheels were like that. There's your fairing with your wheel. So you bring that up to there and it, it just made it angle out from the horizontal. And uh, so I had to sand that flat, take that angled face off and then sand this area flat so that these wheels then sat at 90 degrees parallel to the vertical and adjacent to the horizontal so there's some work in it lads if you're going to do this so uh, I wouldn't recommend it actually this kit it's one of Airfix old kits I saw that it was reboxed I was doing some research online it was reboxed in 1991 um, but I don't know the actual age of it when it was actually tooled um, the tooling was updated in 91 when it was relaunched as kit number 05100 um, it had the internal wall details in the fuselage that's what they added uh, but they didn't improve any of the fits by the looks of it because it's terrible 
so that's where I'm at. Um, my bombs are painted. Uh, the underwing, 550 kilogram bomb, 110 kilogram bombs. Four of those ready to go on the underside. But as you can see, when I get back onto this, I got a lot of sanding to do. Might have a little bit more filler. I can see that as the filler's dried over the night, there's still some little gaps showing because uh, the gaps on the underside of these wing root joints were really wide. They were crazy. Um, so um, I'm not one happy chappy with Airfix, but I'm going to stick with it. I'm not going to throw it away. You know, it's almost there. Uh, just some sanding to do. A lot of sanding. Um, and then prime it and see where we're at after I've primed it. If it looks okay, then I'll get a coat. I'll mask and spray all the underside blue on it. And then I'll mask the upper side. Um, RLM 7071. Alright, so that's it. Till the next update, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. I'm tied up with the grandson for the rest of it. And uh, enjoy yourselves, have fun, and happy modeling. Take care, Tallyo, chocks away. Hi guys, it's me again, Martin. Um, I'm just adding on to the last video. I forgot there's a couple of other things I needed to mention about this plane. Uh, one is the, the rear stabilizers. Um, when you assemble those and you put these struts on, it's two, two strut arms that fit into the bottom of the fuselage and one that fits into a horse shape, horse ring shape um, feature on the underside of the stab and the prong coming off the bottom of where the two arms join drops into that and gives you a surface area over the top of that U-form, an horseshoe shape form to glue to. Now, when you go to do that, you'll find that that horseshoe feature is reversed and it's facing the opposite way. And you know, it, you know you're not gluing it the wrong way around because you've got the tab coming off one end that locates into the fuselage. So that features back to front in the mould on um, on the Airfix mould. I have no clue how they let that go through quality control without making a change to it. Because I'm assuming that when they build these moulds and they're assembled, they get all the parts there to do a test fit assembly before they pass it all off and uh, go into production runs. Um, but that's back to front. I don't know whether that was the engineer's fault, got it back to front on his drawing, or whether it was the tool maker's fault that manufactured the mould. And he got it back to front, set up his plate on his EDM and burned that feature in, in reverse, and uh, probably didn't realise he'd done it. But anyway, it's back to front, and I can show you that now. Hopefully you can see that. There's a little U-shaped feature that the bottom of this arm is supposed to drop into. It's supposed to be facing the opposite way to give you some surface area to glue to. So I couldn't force that feature into there, otherwise the wing would have tipped, the stabilizer would have tipped downwards to do that. So I've had to glue the strut onto the edge of that so that my stabs are straight horizontal. So that's a, another mistake by Airfix that's not been corrected in their tooling. Not very good. Um, oh, and the propeller. I don't know how you guys paint your propellers when you've got multicolour bands. I've got red, white, and the Dunkel Groon. The way I did it, I airbrushed my Dunkel Groon on the back, it, on the props and on the back of the, um, uh, on the back of the propeller so all the Dunkel groom was done first and then I did um, I did the white sorry I did the white first I did the white and then I masked it and did the uh, Dunkel groom and then I masked again and did the red but the way I masked it I didn't use masking tape I used a circle template so what I did, I just put a circle template over the end of the 
there and now I've masked the back of it that's as far down as that will go and I sprayed the red on and then move it to a, you know, either a smaller roll or a bigger diameter roll like that if I put that there I can spray all the white over the green mask the back side of the green spray the white and then come down to a smaller roll mask the white and the black green behind it and just leave an area exposed to spray the red so that's how I did that it's just an idea I came up with because you know what it's like trying to mask around a, a, a formed profiled surface it's a nightmare because you get creases in your masking tape you've got to put on multiple pieces to get that, that surface or you can try bending it the masking as you go along and put folds in it but then there's a risk of uh, airbrush bleed going between those folds so that's what I did I just, just used a simple circlet template circle template and chose diameters that um, created the space and I needed and sprayed the three different sections using a circle template so that's just a little tip uh, if anyone wants to try that or if anybody's already doing it leave me a shout but uh, I just came up with that when I did it anyway that's it enough done there are all the problems there are the other two that's that was the other issue I wanted to talk about the stabs and I forgot to and uh, I just wanted to let you guys know how I did the propeller all right take care guys I'm really going this time and I'll see you soon Charlie Oak jocks away.